Hey you guys, what's up? So today I'm gonna share with you a problem that I had with my furnace and that I just recently fixed. Um, so uh, long story short, you know, over the summer I have been using a lot of AC and now that winter is approaching, it's got colder. My wife turns on the thermostat to call for heat and nothing was happening. So I came down here and look under this sight glass here. Well, right now it's solid red because um, that's how it should be when it's working. But when I was looking down here, uh, it gave me a code of 31. Uh, co the way you read it is here. Um, that's code 31 there. It says a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff listed under there, but if you don't know how to read the code, it's right here. That's your troubleshooting tag. Um, anyway, uh, air code 31 is a very broad code to troubleshoot, but because I have no way around it, I went through the trouble of troubleshooting everything that's listed under there and everything checked out good um and so the next step that i did was you know i was curious to to know what the sequence of operation is for this furnace so I went online and did a little uh, research, um, watched a couple YouTube videos, um, and found that, you know, the sequence of operation for these carrier furnace is that, you know, when you set the thermostat uh, temperature for heat, and the, then the blower motor will come on for 90 seconds. After the blower motor comes on for 90 seconds, then your induced motor will come on. Um, the induced motor will come on, and then once your um, uh, pressure switch determines that you have good venting uh, up there, then your igniter will come on, and your gas goes in, opens up the gas, and flame comes on, and you get heat. Well, the problem that I was having with this thing was that, you know, after uh, each time after I turn on the power, the blower motor will come on, uh, but after 90 seconds, it, it will shut off and nothing was happening afterward. So I decided to, you know, <clears throat> because the next thing in line was the induced motor, it was supposed to come on. So I used a um, voltmeter or multimeter and I checked the um, I checked the the power to this induced motor and there was no power going to it. Um, and then I checked to make sure that I get proper voltage and um, that the bore was getting power and it does. So. I was getting power into the board, but there was no power coming out of the board to the induced motor. So, that right there, I kind of assumed that the circuit board was the culprit. So I went online and I took the number, serial number or whatever here, ID number, and I went online and was just curious to see how much a new board would cost me. and. Surprisingly, they were inexpensive, you know, they were actually pretty cheap. So I got this board, well, actually this one, this one in there is actually the new one now. Um, I got that board from eBay, about 50 bucks. And when it came, I just swapped it out. And after I swapped them out, turn it on, everything came on. I was getting power to the induced motor and I got flame and I got heat. So yeah, um, if you look at this, you may 
say to yourself, well, that's a lot of mess, you know, a lot of wires to mess with. But, you know, it actually is not as bad as you think. It's actually pretty easy. So I was like everyone, you know, I was like, I'm, by all means, I'm no expert. Um, but um, I did uh, what every every rookie would do, you know, I I took the, I unscrew the bolt, took the um, the board out, set it side by side with the new one, and then I took out one pin or one um, wire at a time out, and I will plug into the new one until I finish. And surprisingly, there's only 15, about 15 plugs or wires that you have to take out and plug in. So that was actually pretty easy. Um, yeah, so after I did that, then, you know, it worked. And I <clears throat> couldn't be more happier that I did it myself because something like this would have cost me, you know, easily 400, 500 bucks to have somebody come out and, you know, just troubleshoot and, um, you know, a lot of those guys are not very honest too, so um, they want probably want you to to uh, you know to make the most money out of you too. So I know this because I heard a lot of stories. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope this. I mean, this helped me. So I hope this video um, has helped some of you guys. Or if you find this video helpful, then yeah, good, good for you. And um, if you don't, then you know, um, you just wasted about, you know, ten minutes of your time watching this video. All right, thank you. Let's show you guys that it's working. I just uh, turn off the temperature on the double stack and now it's starting up. The uh, reducer motor is kicking on. And the uh, igniter turns on.